So as most of you unfortunately know, this administration is consistently trying to pass gun control. They're consistently trying to take Americans' guns. And they got a couple of strategies that they employ. One of them is the ATF consistently making new rules in order to be able to door knock you like they're selling solar in order to try to confiscate your trigger, your buttstock, whatever it may be. Another way is more along the lines of a PSYOP to where they put out fake information. Yes, it's fake in terms of what the actual stats are on gun violence. If we're looking at everything in regards to what people die from, gun violence is nothing. Also, if we take out the people who glorify violence, and what I mean by that is the people who are running around thinking they're gangsters, shooting people up on the block. If we take those people out, it's pretty much non-existent. So let's just be clear about that because what you're about to watch is the Surgeon General for Joe Biden sit here and try to sell everybody on gun violence being the number one cause of children dying. And let me just put this up on the screen before we even talk about this. Hmm, forgot to mention that, Surgeon? Yeah, I guess you did, but that's okay. I mean, you're part of an administration that sits here and puts out fake information all day. So... Let's just listen to what this guy has to say, and we'll see how accurate it is. Remember, this is the Surgeon General for the Joe Biden administration. Hello, I'm U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy. Today, for the first time in the history of our office, I am issuing a Surgeon General's Advisory on Firearm Violence. It outlines the urgent threat firearm violence poses to the health and well-being of our country. As a doctor, I've seen the consequences of firearm violence up close in the lives of the patients I've cared for over the years. These are moms and dads, sons and daughters, all of whom were robbed of their physical and mental health by senseless acts of violence. Unfortunately, the problem has continued to grow. 54% of adults in America report that they or a family member have experienced a firearm-related incident whether they've been personally threatened with or injured by a firearm, lost a family member, witnessed a shooting, or shot a firearm in self-defense. Really, dude? Really? 54%? That's 160 million Americans you're saying that have either witnessed or experienced a family member being in some kind of shooting? You're higher than Hunter Biden, man. Let me read this. Have personally been threatened with or injured by a firearm. No, it's not 54%. I don't know one. I don't know one person where I'm like, oh yeah, that person got killed by a gun. Used a firearm in self-defense. Why would that be in there? Why would you put that in your big old Surgeon General warning on firearm violence? Do you consider self-defense violence or do you consider it self-defense? Because for me, there's a clear distinction between, oh, okay, I'm gonna go rob somebody with a gun today because I have no morals and I'm just gonna get over on someone, or someone broke into my house and I had no choice, I had to shoot them. You don't see a difference in that, Surgeon uh, Vivek Mur Murthy? Continuing on. Many of these harms are disproportionately felt in our communities. Black individuals endure the highest rates of firearm homicides. I wonder why, man. <laughs> Let me play a quick clip in case people are confused on why I'm saying this. And no, it has nothing to do with racism. It has nothing to do with any of that. I judge people by their character and how they choose to act. Your skin color, your denomination of religion, any of that crap, I don't care. If you're a good person, you're good in my book. But let me just play a quick clip in case the people who are confused are watching on why black individuals endure the highest rates of firearm homicides. Okay? Now Come on, y'all know we on the block, man. Come through here playing what they gonna get. No work. <laughs> Come through run? here playing what they gonna get. What can you run? No work. <laughs> you can't even go out the gate. No rap. Like, you can't even come out the gate. Come through here playing what they gonna get. You can't even replay face. Come through here playing what they gonna get. You can't even replay face. Now, I do quite a bit of research on the internet, and I don't know any other race that does this. And what I mean by this is sitting there on their iPhone or on a live stream, flexing that they're on the block, showing off their guns with their switches and telling people that they're gonna shoot them. I've never seen it. So when you say, well, 
The black population is disproportionately involved or victims of these firearm violences. Is it because of their own doing? Or is it because they're unlucky? Remove this. Change the culture. Where are the parents? Some of these kids look like they're fucking 15. But no, oh, oh man, there's so much firearm violence in this country. We've got to address it. We've got to address it at the core. It's like anything else in life that you see as a problem. You know what gun control is? It's like you going to your doctor and saying, you know what, I got a headache. Here's an aspirin. Does it fix it? No. It covers it up. The underlying cause is still there. And until you address it, you're going to continue to deal with it. It's the same with gun control, gun violence, all this other stuff. Until you address crazy people, until you address the culture that we have in America right now, and I'm not just talking about these kids. I'm talking about everything. Traditional values are gone. Treating people as you would like to be treated is gone. Having integrity, morals, pretty much gone. And y'all think, oh man, we're just gonna, we're gonna ban more guns and that'll help. You guys are nuts. You don't understand psychology or how the human mind works. Let's let him finish though. While suicide rates are highest among veterans, older white individuals, and younger American Indian and Alaska Native people. You know why suicide rates are so high in veterans? Maybe it's because we spend so much money on crap that we don't need to in this country instead of providing them with benefits to where they can actually have some good mental health after they see their buddies blown up in war. You ever think of that? I'm a huge proponent of men getting help with their mental health. Go to a therapist, go see someone, and no, you're not a pussy. No, you're not weak for going and working out your issues. What's the alternative? Veterans off themselves all the time because of it. And if maybe they had a different perspective, maybe if they had a third party opinion to where they're being told, look, it's not that bad. Look, you're gonna get through this. You're gonna be good. Maybe if they had that, they wouldn't. But no, they go to the VA, they have some person just going through the motions. Oh, are you doing okay? Oh, well, that's not good. It's not gonna help them. But here we are sending money to other countries. Here we are spending money on woke shit instead of helping them out. So once again, this has nothing to do with gun violence. This is a cause and effect. It's from neglect from our country. So let's not get it twisted here. What is especially devastating is how this has affected our children. Firearm violence has become the number one cause of death among children and adolescents, more than car accidents or drug overdoses. Okay, cool. Let's just roll with these numbers for a second. How many of these kids are in the hood where their dad is a gangbanger or someone who posts one of these live videos telling his ops to come have a shootout with him. How many of those are from that? Because as far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't be counted. And if that's insensitive, if you're upset about that, fine, I don't care. If you're inviting something in, sooner or later, it's going to come in. If you're on a live stream telling your ops to pull up to have a shootout, sooner or later, somebody's gonna come do it. And if your kid, is in the house or gets hit by a bullet, that's on you. It's not on us. We don't lose our rights because you're an idiot. How does that make sense? But no, we got the Surgeon General saying, well, no, the cause of children's death is gun violence. Where is it? Besides in the hoods, where is it? I haven't seen it. I've sat with parents who've lost a child to firearm violence. I've listened to their stories and felt their pain as they describe the holes in their hearts. As a father, I know a parent's worst nightmare is to lose a child, to feel like you can't protect your child from harm. So look, man, you're a paid clown, okay? Let's just call it what it is. No one's taking what you're saying with weight, one, because you're a doctor, but you're spitting out stuff that is simply false, okay? If you don't add context to what you're saying, it's a joke. I don't care what's on your shirt, I don't care how many degrees you have. If you're not sticking to logic in life, I don't care who you are. I'm not listening to you and I'm doing my own research.